Hey, it's Bart with an exclusive for Patreon followers. So I've got Balconis Mirador, hello, uh, an American single malt, and the SMWS, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, their single cask Balcones. And we're going to test it! Dummy style, baby, dummy style. Now, this may come out later. We may put it out public, but what we want to do is thank our Patreon supporters. You guys really are helping us stay afloat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And give you a little something extra, a little bonus that we do. So first of all, I'm on my board game set. Hello. Check out all the games. That's goodness. And some whiskeys here. We're going to do a direct comparison. Not even fair, really. It's not, but we're going to do it. So what had happened was the uh, the second barrel of Balcones, and I did not get a hold of the first one. I don't even know how it did. But with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society is 140. So 140 is the Balcones, Balcones Distillery. 0.2 means this is their second cast that they've got from them. Great name, Shotgun Roller Gig. We're going to try that. By the way, the ABV is there's only one of 98 bottles ABV is 58.9 we're going to try that that'll be in a cask thief Stranahan's Glencairn we've got some water to mix in I've got a scotch trooper Glencairn for the Mirador which is also Balcones uh, again Texas single malt pot distilled and the ABV which I cannot read unless I angle is 54.8 54.8 so, how do they compare head to head? I can tell you I bought this having not tasted it, loved it, was a big fan of it. Um, I know Roy Aquavite picked it up as well. Go check his channel out if you want to hear his views. What it gave me was a very, I love American single malts, just love it. And what they're doing here is um, if memory serves, and it could be slightly wrong, I think I looked it up and checked, they used a refill barrel. And in Texas, it's so hot, they're in Waco, Texas, that uh, a lot of wood influence will come in there and really kind of take over the, the dram. That can be good. But they used a refill here, which toned it down, and it's an American single malt, so it's barley, and it has a real... It harkens to scotch. So when this came available, I was like, heck yeah, shotgun whirly gig, got to get it. Now I will say I called up because the email said $85, one per customer. I tried to get online to buy it and it was $125 and I was like, what? And so I called and they said, sorry, an error in the email, it is $125. Here's the kicker. Um, I don't remember exactly, but I was at Total in Texas, and I think I picked this up. Gosh, I want to say like 80 bucks. So $80 for this. This is a little higher proof, but um, $125 plus the shipping. Now, I added another bottle in, bring that shipping down. Um, but just having access to it, you can only get this. Well, I don't know. Other total stores in other states might have it. Kansas, I can't get this at all. So um, let's start with the Mirador. Uh, nosing. So it's got a light, crisp kind of nose, a little bit of tingle from that ABV. I get kind of those sweet... Barley notes, but not quite grain, more like vanilla and a slight hint of floral. Now, this is very abnormal for a Balcones. Um, I'm usually getting sagebrush or, or more caramel bourbon notes. And this is how I know they're doing wonderful, wonderful things. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I do love American single malts. I like scotch, too. I like barley. I like malted barley. So that could be part of it. It's hitting my sweet spot. Crisp, um, almost like a pear. Refreshing, clean. Hmm, that's interesting. So I've got, how do I describe that? 
a little bit more of an oak. Still crisp and clean, but a little bit more of like an oak wood chip nose to it. Not strong, not heavy. Ah, I almost get a little caramel, almost like a little corn syrup in there. Almost like what you would put, <laughs> Aunt Jemima came to mind, like what you would put on a pancake. That's interesting. I don't know if I've gotten that before. One thing about an SMWS bottle is, um, as you get below the neck and it, and, and it oxidizes a little bit, it, it'll change and usually gets more flavorful. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm getting like a sweet maple. Man, this one's making me salivate. That did not. Coming into this, I'm telling you, I was leaning just toward the mirror door here. Huh. Okay, definitely getting like a maple syrup on there. That's interesting. Let's taste. Grain, uh, barley, uh, baked bread. <laughs> this sounds weird, but like the crust, the hard outer crust of a French loaf. Mm, the finish is, is uh, I give it maybe a little, again, maybe a little pear note. Um, and then it disappears, but it, the pear note is like a, a crisp, light fruit, watery pear. Again, interesting. A little hint of vanilla right there at the end, too. Mm. Forefront, I got a little bit of the oak. And again, that pear pops in there. Really nice, really interesting, really different from Balcones. Um... This made me stand up and really pay attention. And uh, they're really leaders, by the way, on the American single malt push to get an actual category legalized within the United States. Um, doesn't mean folks couldn't be outside that category and still what they do to do, still do what they do today. You know, whatever. But to actually have some legal guidelines, I think you'll end up with something that it's an American single malt, I believe will be the name. And then you'll have a bourbon and you'll have a rye. And I think it will even up sales overseas. Let me cleanse the palate a little bit. I'll try not to clink and crinkle this plastic. I say as I do. And we'll come into this SMWS. Now, again, they name wonderfully. So they have a tasting panel. They've named this Shotgun Whirly Gig, 58.9%, one of 98 bottles. I've already nosed it, and it's still got that dustiness there. Mm. Wow. Ooh, a couple things going on here. A little more rich on the forefront. I'm going to come back to the middle. The finish is tutti fruity. It's citrus. I think the middle is citrusy opening, but this is all like mango and juice. Well, let me let me pause. I think my my wife just came in, and I'll come back to the flavor notes on this. All right, I'm back. You got to greet the spouse when she arrives. And we've been in the uh, transition from Thanksgiving to Christmas decorations. So you may hear some noise up there. Let me come back. So first blush, a little bit more bursting flavor. Definitely different though. You are not getting the same dram here. Let me uh, take another sip. Then I'll add water. Mmm. So I get a little bit of a dusty, maybe a little bit of dusty, dry, slightly sour driftwood. 
that goes into a citrus and tutti frutti juicy fruit tropical flavor. Interesting. I'm going to add another drop to that and then two drops to this one as well. So, again, the, uh, the main thing here is that they are distinctly different. And neither of these, if I tried them blind, there is no way I would be thinking, I don't, I, there's no way I'd be thinking about Kones. And I don't even think I would be thinking American whiskey. So, I mean, we might need to, I don't know, Scott's already had this, but uh, I don't know, if we ever have a, like a surprise guest, I think I would love to, to throw this at them and see what they got. Um, SMWS is doing a lot of like, well, I almost said out of bounds exploration, but what's out of bounds? I mean, it's not. They're just really spreading their wings with rum and cognacs and bourbons and American single malts, um, Armagnacs, of course, all the different scotches. Um, and of course, being whiskey fans, we've got to diagnose the label, but their whole deal is you don't really even need to know. Just try it and judge the flavor on what's in the bottle. That's what SMWS brings you. They got a sale right now. I'm not even pumping it because it's over by now, but I think I need to go pumping it. But I think I'm going to go pick up some things on a uh, Cyber Monday here. Let's go back to the Mirador. Mmm. God, that still smells so good. It's vanillas and woods. Yeah, softer entry. It doesn't overpower as much as this. Wood, vanilla, caramel, caramel souffle. I don't even know if that exists. But it's like, like a caramel meringue almost. You get that puffy, marshmallowy meringue with a caramel note. Isn't that neat? I want to make a caramel meringue pie. Wow. Why? I've got it right here. This is nice. This is very nice. Hmm. Savory on the finish. Again, caramel crust notes, almost like a graham cracker crust. Why am I getting pie and more pie off of this? That's awesome intriguing. I'm going to cleanse again and we're going to come back one last time because we got water here. By the way, while I'm doing that, if you love board games at all, now if you hate them, don't worry about it, but if you love them, go check Bonding with Board Games. That's my board game show where you'll see some of these reviewed. Hello? Scott hates that part. <laughs> all right. All right. Again, bursting. Um, a lot more whew, in your face, a lot more alcohol flash at the beginning. Let's see what the water did here. Just noses more rich. Um, it's almost like caramel sweet toffee with a touch of furniture polish. Yeah, that's not wrong. Mm. Hmm. Water tamed down the burst a little bit, which means it's curbed some of that ABV. I still get a slightly tutti frutti, soury, tropical fruit. Citrus is all over this. Like a touch of mango. Wow. Maybe even a now I'm going to stick with the mango. Wow. i got to let my wife try that. She loves mango. I don't think she'll get it here, though. Yeah, the, way more tropical with this, which, is, again, blows my mind. Blows my mind that it's coming out of Balcones. It should, but wow, are we headed to interesting times. We're in interesting times. Goodness. You know, I started to think I need to move faster and hurry this through. This is just for you guys and gals on Patreon.
Thanks again, by the way. Uh, you guys are great. Um, let me talk, because I think that's all I'll say on these. So, Patreon supporters. The idea of even having a Patreon account actually came from the board game world. Um, I'd been on a, uh, I'd been a contributor on another show, a big channel now, it's huge. Um, and I knew, although I was on what's called the Dice Tower, um, Tom Vassell, who started that up, did not use Patreon, but I knew several other, uh, board game designers and folks that had shows that were using Patreon. And I thought, well, that's an interesting crowdfunding way to help you financially with your show. So if people like what you're doing, they can just thank you with, hey, here's some money. We like what you're putting out. It's voluntary, so you better be good, or at least good enough or likable enough that I like your show and I want to help support it. I love that concept. We are in very cool, interesting times. Uh, the barrier for entry is low. You can We shoot with a pretty nice camera, a uh, Sony, 35mm, uh, but you can start shooting with you know, uh, an iPhone or a smartphone. So the barrier for entry is great, and the content is just kind of the, I think, the, the interesting stuff rises to the top. So, and everything I knew from the board game side was about 1% of your total fans will actually come in and support you financially. And I was like, that seems low. But again, I got buddies that have 200,000 plus subscribers. So when 1% of their fans come in and support them financially, it allows them to quit their day job. Scott and I aren't there yet, but we're working toward it. We may even be able to retire and then move into this, which was more of our plan. So again, thank you to, to all of our supporters. All right, I lost battery in there. <laughs> and I think I heard a beep. So let me do my wrap up again, because I think you missed that. So I led into which one would you get if you were going to pick one? First of all, I don't think you can get either of these anymore. Apologies to our Patreon backers, but one reason we're going to put this on the show is you guys are supporting us kind of for our opinions. And I have a sneak that I believe, and I have no information, but I'm pretty sure they're going to have a mirror door too. It was such a hit. And I, I feel like what they have coming, they're on the forefront of this American single malt push, along with some other folks, Westland, Stranahan's, and whatnot. But... I believe you'll see a Mirador 2. Get it. If I were to pick the two, I think I would pick the SMWS if I could only land one of them. The bottle continues to evolve and change. Um, it's got a little bit more punch to it, although it's a little more floral, citrusy. Um, but I think it's going to continue to do cool things. That being said, again... I believe, and I have no insight at all, you'll see a Mirador 2, find it, get it. If you have a total store, which we do not in Kansas, go to them and tell them you need to have Balcones. Not only will that help them, it will help you as they put out things that push the bounds. I like bourbon. I lean scotch. We started with scotch. Bourbon can be a little samey. Scott and I will talk about bourbon notes, caramels, cinnamons, oaks, vanillas. Nothing against bourbons. I like high rye bourbons personally. But what's going on with barley and American single malts is what I also like with scotch. It can be all over the place. Region matters. Although you can have an unpeated Isla, Bunahaben, that doesn't even... If I say Isla Whiskey, you're thinking, Pete, no. So you can do whatever you want there as well. And that's what's going to happen here. I think American single malts will get classified as an American single malt. Doesn't mean they can't, there's other folks can't do an Oregon single malt or whatever. But it'll have a classification, which will give it some rules, which will give it some boundaries, which will allow it to get market share, 
which will allow it to play and expand and even influence some things overseas. I'm calling it. I think that's what's happening. If a Mirador 2 comes out, grab it. If a Balcones 140.3, the point meaning the, the third barrel in this case that they get, grab it. If you have a friend that has the point one, I haven't seen that one, or a two, try it. I believe it's evolving, but the citruses and the things and the mangoes that are going on here are unbelievable. The scotch feel that I get from the Mirador, unbelievable. Scotch it, you scotch gods. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. And we'll continue to do some of these shows that will be just for you guys. Maybe we'll take them over to the public side later. Maybe not. We don't know. Again, thank you. Without you guys and gals, I don't think we'd be able to still continue doing this. We've got a great camera upgrade because of you guys and great lights that are all LED thanks to you guys. So again, thank you for helping us make the show better. Because you know it's not me. <laughs> Scotch at you, Scotch gods.